Hi, everybody. So thanks for being here. Certainly, I'm glad to be here. And uh, for those who don't know me, I'm, yeah, I'm the hat panel guy. But uh, you know that I'm uh, always interested in, uh, in uh, new ways of interacting with uh, my open app system. So I've, I, to this year, I will present you what I've done over the last year or so, on and off. And um, it's a little bit of continuity between uh, what I did last year and, uh, and uh, what I will present you today. So, uh, Meet Habot, that's what I called him. It's a chatbot for OpenHab. So, a little bit of uh, background first. If you want to talk to OpenHab, what are your options? So, you have great integrations for all the new and uh, state-of-the-art platforms that you can have now, uh, that is uh, Alexa, uh, Google Assistant, uh, HomeKit from Apple, if you want to talk to Siri. So those are uh, very mature and uh, they work well. And uh, Amazon is, is selling uh, Echo devices that, uh, like Outcakes. Uh, I, I, I believe I saw 65 or 67 uh, eco device per minute they sell in the world. So uh, that's uh, how popular they are. And uh, so that's, those are cloud-based. So you know if you're an open app user um, about clouds, those devices are very cheap, maybe. There's a reason for that. Uh, if you want to go to uh, the offline routes, you have a couple of options too. Uh, one of them is uh, Mycroft. That's a very cool project, open source project, which uh, is uh, yeah, basically a voice assistant too. So you can uh, have a look at that. Uh, there is an official uh, micro skill for Mycroft, uh, open app, sorry, uh, skill for Mycroft. So if you want to go that route, uh, you're, you're covered. Uh, last year, if you were here, uh, and you probably will remember I presented SNPs, which is another solution which uh, works offline. It's not open source, or they've, open, uh, they've uh, open sourced a little bit of, uh, of their platform, but um, uh, they're MQTT-based, so now they are at, uh, we have a great MQTT binding, or bindings, <laughs> you can uh, probably go uh, explore that a little further. Um, what you can do, though, is uh, have your assistant completely integrated into uh, ESH or OpenApp because the basic building blocks are there. So you have uh, services for speech to text, you have services for human language interpretation, uh, interpretation. you have uh, services for text to speech. But you need add-ons for text-to-speech. -to you're covered because you have uh, multiple options. For uh, HLI, so in the middle, you have a simple interpreter, uh, which is uh, basically uh, rule-based, but no, no, not rule-based. But you can uh, query a little bas uh, basic sentences, and it will uh, understand you. You have the uh, rule-based interpreter. If you have a string item, you can copy what uh, the, the natural language sentence that you that, 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 that has been recognized by uh, speech-to-text into, into that item and uh, pick, up, pick it up, pick, pick up the change uh, with a rule and do whatever you want with it. Um, Speech to text is a little bit more complicated. Uh, last year, I attempted to provide a, 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 an add on for that with CMU Sphinx uh, STT. But apart from that, uh, there's still nothing. So if you want, for instance, to integrate Google text to speech or Azure, Microsoft, you, can, you could do it, but nobody has done it yet. So, uh, what I wanted to say is that Habot st started as a, as a human language interpreter for ESH. 
That is, uh, I wanted to have this voice-enabled assistant, and uh, I wanted an interpreter for uh, for that completely integrated into into uh, ESH. But this uh, quickly evolved because I realized that I didn't actually need a um, a voice-only voice assistant, I, I mean an always-on microphone in my room. What I wanted is to simply pick up my phone and ask a question and have the relevant information pre pre presented to me visually with controls and so on. So that's why uh, Habots is both a uh, machine learning human language interpreter for uh, ASH based on uh, Apache OpenNLP. And also, uh, it was a perfect occasion to give OpenAB another, yet another uh, state-of-the-art uh, user interface that is a progressive web app. We'll see what it means uh, later on. And uh, built with the modern framework and so on, like Vue.js, which uh, actually powers the website now. By the way, new website. I hope you like it. And uh, and uh, yeah, we, we we'll give you uh, we'll give you a little uh, hands-on practical tour later of uh, what it, what it, what it can do. So a little bit about uh, NLP, natural language processing. So uh, first, why open NLP? So it's a, a project inc incubated by the Apache Foundation. And basically, uh, first it's in, it's in Java, so for integration into, into ESH, uh, that's a plus. It's uh, relatively lightweight. Uh, you can run it on your uh, Raspberry, uh, Raspberry Pi. You don't need a supercomputer to, you to run it. Uh, it's uh, self-contained, uh, no dependency. So if you want to embed it into a, into a bundle, into a jar file, it's, uh, it's easier. And in, it provides you with a lot of tools uh, among which you can uh, use those three. Uh, actually, I use those three. Uh, first, the tokenizer. So if you have a sentence, you need to split it up into uh, tokens uh, for further processing. So it's uh, not as easy as you might uh, uh, think. But uh, because there are subtle, subtle uh, differences between languages and so on, if you have an ap apostrophe, maybe it's part of the world, maybe it's not. So uh, the tokenizer will, uh, will take care of that. Uh, the second tool is the categorizer. So you know that if you have a sentence, you have to classify it and give it a category. That's called, uh, in, my, in, uh, in my implementation, an intent. Uh, that, that means if, if you have, for, ex for example, turn off the TV in the, in the living room, you have to uh, figure out that it's an intent, a uh, deactivated de object intent. And uh, last, you have a name finder tool that you can use. And uh, it's uh, the one that will identify the, 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 the entities that you can find in, the, in your sentence. For, for example, uh, temperature is an object, bedroom is a location, 50% uh, is a value, and based on uh, the words themselves and uh, their position in the sentence, the, the machine learning will figure out and uh, extract those uh, entities with uh, their type. So how does it work in, uh, in a nutshell? So uh, the, the web app will, uh, will make a request to the REST API. So for, for, for instance, here, set the light in the kitchen to 30%. So this will get into a REST API resource and passed over to the OpenNLP interpreter, which will, uh, in turn, uh, fit the sentence to the, what I call the intent trainer, which is in charge of uh, analyzing the sentence 
and uh, outputting this intent. This means from this uh, from this sentence, uh, it it was able to uh, classify the 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 intent to set value and extract object equals light, location equals kitchen, and values equals 30%. And once we have that, then uh, we can pass it to the proper scale. So you have, uh, by the way, all those boxes are uh, OSGI components or services. So uh, if you had a new skill, uh, that will be another intent that the bot supports. So if you have an intent, uh, you have only one skill which is able to process it. Why? Because the, the, the skills actually define the intent and provide the, the, the training data for it. So once you're in your skill, what you want to do, you have object equal light, and location equal kitchen, and you have to identify items that you are going to work with. So how do you, how do how do you do that? Is you have an item resolver, which is which can have a lead, uh, different implementation, but the current implementation is by using semantics, which is the newest uh, shiny bundle in. Uh, in Eclipse Smart Home that you can uh, use. We'll talk about it later. So using this item resolver, we, you, you will be able to identify or match the items that uh, we are going to operate. So the skill, once he had the items, he can do whatever is necessary to perform his tasks. So probably he will uh, send the commands or send commands to each of those items with 30 as a value and then uh, provide an answer to the user. So you have both natural language answer and both a card, which is a piece of UI that you can uh, display along with the answer. For that, you have a card builder and also a card registry because you can save cards as I will show you later. So once you have all that, you simply put it all into a structure and you reply to the original request with all the information. So going back to the semantics, how does it work? So. Um, it was inspired, it was based on the bridge schema that is uh, a uniform metadata schema for buildings. You can go there, brickschema.org, and you will uh, get more information and uh, figure out how this all works. And in the, in the Smart Home implementation, uh, this is what actually Kai in the of ways. And you have different classes, different types, and a relation between them. So uh, how is it going to build those relations? Uh, currently, we'll, you, it will look at groups and uh, which uh, items are member of uh, which groups, and uh, it will figure out that, uh, for instance, an item is in a particular location. So the, the whole point of semantics, of course, is to give meaning to, to your items and uh, the, the groups, the relationships that you have in your, in your installation, regardless of their name, of course, and um, so that you can use it without ambiguity in your code. For, insta for instance, if you're into code, you can do this. You can filter for all items which are a set point and which relate to a uh, temperature. And you will be presented with a, you can collect them and you, you will be presented with a set of all items 
uh, whatever, whatever they're called, uh, because they're uh, in those classes in the semantic ontology. You also have a semantic service for, uh, for instance, identifying items in a particular location. In that case, first floor is a part of the ontology, so if you want to have all the items in the, in the first floor, then it uh, doesn't matter if, you, if it's called uh, upstairs or Obergeschoss or uh, Premier Etage or whatever, because the, the, the tag will, provi will provide translated synonyms for uh, all those um, uh, terms that you can refer the, the, the tag uh, to. And this is currently the, um, the, the, the Smart Home Ontology as it stands now. So, if you have, um, for instance, a location, you can identify it as a first floor. You'll notice that is a, it is a, a hierarchy, so first floor is a kind of floor, uh, garage door is a kind of door, so um, we'll see how it translates to, to, to natural language queries uh, after that. Of course, this, this is very new. This was merged uh, actually last week. So dogs are coming. There are none for, for the moment, at the moment. And it's a little... Will that go away, maybe? Okay. Yeah, it's a little small, but um, the way you can uh, uh, put your items in the ontology is to uh, tag them. Each one of those is a tag that you can uh, uh, put on your items. So point and property usually go together. Location is uh, usually on groups because it doesn't make sense if, he, if it's not a group. Uh, equipment should be on groups too because equipment are supposed to have uh, multiple points. There is a little bit of debate about that, but okay. And um, yeah, let's see uh, how it's, uh, 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 how it's uh, implemented in practice. So first, here are an, an example. Uh, it's based on the demo package. So uh, you have basically the same items that you know if you use the demo package, except now there are tags. So, um, if, you, uh, if you want to, 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 to get up to, up to speed with tags, just have a look at the demo package. You can see also that um, uh, you can use metadata to uh, give synonyms to your items, because uh, for very specific, spe specific stuff, you will not have in the ontology, something that you can relate to. So the, um, the practice is to uh, give the most accurate or the parent tag uh, from the ontology and then use a synonym. So once you have that, you can launch this. And you'll have this Habot user interface. So if you get here. So first, what I want to show you is that uh, you'll want to have HTTPS here. Why? Because uh, most of the features, like uh, the advanced feature, like uh, uh, the, voice, the voice input and so on, uh, they only work over HTTP. So there are multiple ways to do that, uh, but you have to have that. If you don't, just use uh, my, myopenapp.org over the remotely, and uh, it will work because uh, you, you have HTTPS set up for you. 
what you can do on Windows since uh, this, this week is to uh, transform this app into a real app. Uh, that's one of the features that, uh, that a progressive web app can do. So you have this button. If you don't have the button, by the way, you can also uh, go here and select Install Habot. And if you do that, you see, do you see what's happening? You are, you do, it's not in the browser anymore. It's a real app, and it's in, it's in its own window and so on. If you, if you look here, it was added here. You can search for it. So basically, it's an app now. And uh, yeah, it's only for Windows. If you have a Mac, if you have a Linux, you have to wait a little bit. Or I can show you that. Um, you just have to go to Chrome colon flags and enable. Yeah, you can search for PWA, that's a progressive web app, and you have to uh, enable desktop web apps, uh, de desktop PWAs. And uh, by the way, this too. This is uh, actually quite cool. It's when you, um, when you have a link to your app, then it's not, uh, it's not uh, handled by the browser anymore. So if you click here, you will go straight to the app. So, what can it do? You can, uh, of course, ask, uh, ask the temperature in the kitchen, and it will be, it, it will be uh, extract the, the information that you need and uh, present it to you. If you have a synonym, like uh, what's the, or oh, no, uh, lights, in Amy's room, then it's, uh, it's working too. Uh, one of the early use cases that I ha wanted to have is uh, show me the temperature in the living room over the last two weeks. And what it will do is uh, extract a, a chart with the period that, uh, that uh, you specify. I add it later on an analyzer, uh, analyzer which uh, is able to uh, let you configure really one, uh, what you want to see. If you want to mix it up with another item, then you can do uh, whatever you want. You can change the period and so on to maybe two weeks. No one month, it is already two weeks. So yeah, you can, you can do a lot of stuff with this. Yeah, already known. Uh, of course, it's in uh, three languages. So if you have here, and you go to Paper UI, and you change here the language, Oh, oh, okay. So it works in French, obviously. <laughs> yeah. So if you have, uh, by the way, you can see that the, the 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 terms are translated. That's the the semantics in action. Of course, you have it out of the reach, <laughs> naturally. <laughs> so here, uh, what can I say? Heizung, no. Heizung im, okay. Okay, so yeah. uh, it's, uh, it's, it's been able to identify okay as first floor, and then it's uh, presented you that all it has on, uh, on the first floor as uh, eatings. If you have, uh, for instance, here, 
That's the door. So the front door, as I said, is a kind of door. The, ga the garage door is a, ga is, a, um, is, a, is a kind of door. So if you have garage door, I guess, yeah, this works too. Let's switch back to English. <laughs> I don't know about time. Uh, I am allowed to, yeah, don't want to get in the way in your lunch, so. <laughs> um, what you can do also is to inject new skills into this system. And uh, for that, I prepared um, a bundle here. And I will try to put it here. And check, let's check. Yeah. So what this what this does is here you have the code which is implemented as skill. So what you have to do is um declare it as a component and uh this is the the intent that uh, the skill will handle. You have to supply it a bunch of trading data, and then you have to implement the method that will, um, that will uh, perform the task that you want. Here, here I am using semantics to identify the HVAC items or the set point items if I don't give it a, a location, for instance. If I say now, I'm cold. Oh, sorry. Yep, nope. Oh, by the way, yeah, you have a car designer. I was planning to, to show it to you, but uh, maybe it's, uh, it's too late now. So I don't want that here. Um, yeah, I'm cold. Right, so, okay, this, uh, this doesn't work. Uh, so you have a bunch of skills that you can use uh, by default if you say turn on the lights in the uh, kitchen. Then it will perform what you want. If you, see, if, you, if you say set the temperature to 21, Oh, no, set to set point to 21. Yeah, it will work too. Um, you can, if, you, if you're using the, the, the new rule engine, you can say create a rule, and then it will present you with this. And for instance, in uh, yeah, 15 minutes, you can uh, send some comments to some item and maybe push a notification with a message. It's time for lunch, for instance. Click. Yep. And then if you want, you can review it in the new uh, rule engine in Papyria. By the way, notification, you have to enable them before. So if you do that, you need to allow them. And... Ah, okay. This needs the internet, obviously. Maybe it's... It's that, yeah, no, that's what I want, actually, but... <laughs> Alarms only, yep. Let's try it again. Push. Okay. So, this will work next time, I guess. <laughs> uh, 
what else? Uh, right. Yep, card deck, notification. No, that's it. Let's get to lunch. <laughs> Thank you.